we are on the windy, windy, misty mountaintop. I have been stirring and stirring and stirring and whipping up a batch of blues turnarounds for ya. <laughs> The chords here are B7 to A7 to E7, 5, 4, 1, and then ending on B7. So I start out uh, sweeping a B triad arpeggio. I slide it down to the flat five, the blue note, to the root, slide it down to five and flat five again. Third, fourth, fifth. And then as it changes to the A7, then I bend a half step from the F sharp to G, which would be the, the flat seven degree of the A7 chord. Same thing, an octave lower. And as it hits the E chord, Instead of going from F sharp to G, I bend a whole step to get that major third of the E7. Then I jump into the ninth position, hitting the minor third to the major third. And I end on the third of the B7, bending A to B, the flat seven to the root. if you're not familiar with it, is a musical form that is generally 12 bars long, sometimes 16, sometimes there's an oddball form, but generally it's 12. And there's generally three chords involved. Although it's a dominant chord, it's referred to as the one chord in the blues in this key of E would be E. The four chord, you would go up a fourth, and that would be A7, the five chord, B7. And it's usually on the turnarounds that you add the most tension to to build the story and then it would release on the one chord. 
So build, build, build on the five, maybe even build more on the four, and then release on the one. And oftentimes it'll go back to the five for a bar or maybe just a couple of beats, depending on the, the tune, to add a little bit of more tension before the beginning of the 12 bar starts over again on the E7. This section is for people that might not know anything about music theory or the mechanics of music. You might be a great player. You might be able to take off songs from records great and already play in a band. But when I start talking in this riff series about numbers, like the first, the third, the fifth, the flat five, the minor third, the flat seven, it all comes from a scale. If I'm playing a major scale, like A major Ionian mode, it's all numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And eight becomes one again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I if I've got one, two, three, and I'm talking about a flat third, then this third will go down a half step. If I'm talking about a seven, a flat seven will be a half step lower. Same with the five. One, two, three, four, five. Flat five is going to be a half step lower. Or a sharp five, half step higher. When I talk about an arpeggio, an arpeggio is just a chord, really, played one note at a time. So if I have an A major seven chord, uh, and I play it one note at a time, that's an arpeggio. Striking it all together is a chord, separate is an arpeggio. If, I, if I'm going to play um, an E minor 7 flat 5 arpeggio, here's an E minor 7. I'm going to flat that 5. Sometimes when I talk about bending, I'll, I'll go by steps. So a half step bend, if I'm going to go from here, you want to make sure not to over bend and do a whole step or somewhere between a half step and a whole step. So it's a good idea when you're practicing bends to play the note that is your target first. Because you get that in your ear and then bend up until you hear it. Uh, sometimes I'll get into a minor third bend. Sometimes the bends are just very subtle. I'm not even thinking half step or whole step. I'm just thinking of making some kind of movement on the string. Some of the techniques I'll be talking about are sweeps. If I have three notes that are lined up on a string, or even two notes. I'm going to just take an A major triad for this example. Rather than the right hand going down, up, down, if I sweep it, it means my right hand is going all downstrokes in the same direction. And there's a kind of a subtle angle change in my hand where, check out the right hand if I'm doing alternate picking. If I'm sweeping, if I'm doing upstrokes, I'll angle it the other way slightly. When I talk about double stops, it just means two notes at the same time. So, like, sometimes I will bend into double stops. Like, I'm going to bend the C to D and grab this G. A reverse bend means that you do the bend first and then let it drop. So if this is my target note, I'll bend up to that first and, and then I don't pick until it's already bent and let it drop. That was a half step bend. 
And a lot of times when I bend, this, this thumb is going to be over the top to help me grip. Uh, if I'm going to be doing some stretches, the thumb is dead center in the back of the neck. Because if your thumb is up here, it really constricts your movement. But if your thumb's in the back, you can get a, a lot bigger spread. <laughs> 